This is Mark and Charity's Coffee Podcast. Mark and Charity Coffee Podcast for this Tuesday, September 27th. Thanks so much for joining us. I am once again on my own today. Mark continues his holidays. Hope he's staying dry because the rain continues as well. And I'm not complaining at all. And I hope he isn't. Although on holidays, it's a little different. I realize it's not so much fun. Uh, But we've (laughs) gone without rain for so long. I am not complaining at all. And the one good thing is, too, it looks like it's going to clear up by the weekend. So that is nice. We will take the rain at the beginning of the week if it clears up by the weekend and for Mark as well. So hopefully he has some nice days ahead while his holidays continue. And with the weather, it's so interesting because we are getting the rain here. And and, and every time I say showers in the forecast or that the rain is happening, I can't help but think of everyone out on the East Coast. And we didn't really talk about it yesterday, but uh, Hurricane Fiona passed through there over the weekend. And we had just been there this summer. We traveled to the East Coast for a couple of weeks. We went through New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, and Prince Edward Island. And all three were hit But it was Prince Edward Island especially that caught my attention. I started to see pictures of the town we just, we stayed outside of. We were in the North Rustico area. So to see the images, how high the water was and the wind blowing and these buildings that we had just been to a month ago um, under siege by this storm and then the aftermath, just incredible. While we were out there, I'm not going to lie, I did kind of look at real estate. Just curious, just looking around because... Quite honestly, it was wonderful and it was hard to come home because Prince Edward Island, there's just something magical about it. Maybe it's the Anne factor. I don't know, but it was very nice being out there, I will admit, and coming home (laughs) with some hesitation. But then things like this happen and and I do do think, wow, how hardy you have to be to live on the island, the extreme weather they experience. I do have family out there. And while we were staying there, we we did catch up with them and visit them. And they did talk, they touched on the winters, not so much these, these summer storms, fall storms, but the winter storms that come through and how the province shuts down and roads are closed and areas you just, <laughs> come November, you just don't travel to. And it seems so foreign. There's something attractive in it in the sense of, the simplicity of it, but when it actually happens, as we saw over the weekend, when these storms roll through and you really do see the damage and and because we were there, almost feel like you're experiencing it yourself, even though we're not, and I'm not trying to downplay what the people on the East Coast, the residents of the East Coast are going through, but you do feel a bit of a connection and you think, wow, that's incredible. And now the cleanup, of course, because there's there are soldiers out there. Um, our army has gone out to help with uh, restoring power and clearing the debris. And even their landmarks. Um, in New Brunswick, there's the Hopewell Rocks. Well, in Prince Edward Island, they had the Teapot Rock. And we were fortunate to see it while we were there. We traveled to Thunder Beach, Thunder Cove, and, and saw these rock formations. And they were, they were beautiful. Well, now that Teapot Rock is gone. The storm wiped it out. And you want to talk about feeling grateful and thankful that we were there when we were. Um, We do have these pictures now and memories of being there. And now it's gone. And nobody nobody else is going to have those memories or nobody new to the area will have those memories. It's amazing what Mother Nature can do. And she reminds us every so often just how powerful she is. So very interesting. And of course, we are thinking of everyone out on the East Coast, relatives, friends, um, strangers, everyone out there living living on the island and in New Brunswick and Nova Scotia, Cape Breton, also hard hit and hoping that their power will be restored shortly and they can hunker down for the winter now. But thoughts and prayers going, going to the east coast of Canada after that storm. This morning, I touched on a new book by Kelly Ripa. Talk about switching gears. <laughs> but this also piqued my interest this morning and, and got me thinking. Kelly Ripa is sharing her quote unquote roller coaster ride to happiness in a new book, Live Wire, Long Winded Short Story. She's featured on the cover of People magazine and it covers her life as a mom, as a wife, and as an actress and co host of this hit television show. So it spans from the time she started on the show in 2001. Until now with Ryan Seacrest and she gives, she kind of pulls the curtain back and gives us all a glimpse behind the scenes, her experiences and what has happened over the course of the 20 years she's been on the show. What I found so interesting about this, now that she has a new book, 
um, so much as the fact that she's telling stories or sharing her stories about Regis Philman, who, as we know, passed away a few years ago. I always question this when people decide to talk about their experiences with people after they're gone, because those people now can't either defend themselves or add to the story, give a different perspective. We kind of have to go by what Kelly is sharing. And it it's, I don't know. I just, there's something about it that just doesn't sit well with me because I think that's, that's not really fair. You could have put this book out five years ago and Regis still would have been here. And not that, not that Regis needs sympathy or he's a victim here by any means, because she says she doesn't, she's not trying to bad mouth anybody or, or tarnish anybody's reputation. And there are people that she shares stories about that who are still alive. But in his case, being Regis, um, it just feels like maybe she waited too long that maybe there is that element. Did she wait or question to be asked? Did she wait until he passed before he put it out? Because he, he, then he can't, um, respond. I, I don't know. It'll be, it'll be interesting. Will I read the book? Yes, I will. Because I am a fan of the show and, and I remember watching it when it was Regis and Kathy Lee. And then yes, when it was Regis and Kelly and now with Kelly and Ryan and as a, a working, uh, a working woman in television, as well as a mom and wife, I do find her very interesting. She hasn't shied away. I do admit that Kelly Ripa has never shied away from sharing her personal stories. Uh, everything from the time when she first started on the show, there was a psychic and he gave away the fact that she was pregnant with her first, her third child before they had time to tell anybody. Um, she's also shared about her kids walking in on her and her husband, Mark. She hasn't shied away about the Botox uh, treatments that she has had in the past, her health, her life, her life in general. She's never shied away from that. So I do give her credit that way. But the it, it, the stories about Regis just kind of struck me. So yes, I probably will read her book and you may want to pick it up as well. It could be a great stocking stuff or something under the tree this holiday season. Again, it's called Livewire, long-winded short stories. And that's kind of how I feel this morning. Short stories may be a little too long-winded. But thank you for joining me uh, this morning for the Mark and Charity Coffee Podcast. Hopefully you found it somewhat interesting and you've enjoyed your coffee break today. Now it's time, yeah, to get back to work. You'll find the Mark and Charity Coffee Podcast wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Be sure to subscribe and it will come automatically and you can listen daily. We would love for you to join us. Mark and Charity Mornings back tomorrow, six o'clock on 95.5 Hits FM. Enjoy your Tuesday.